This edition of Go Kenora is brought to you by Swift Cash. Welcome, welcome to this Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> in my head. Oh, that thing is that thing is ridiculously catchy. Yeah. 722 million views. It's been parodied by I think everybody on the planet. The thing is just nuts. Yep. Oh, Madonna's concert last night. Really? Too, eh? Yeah. Really? Good morning. Jeez. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, you know, another beautiful day. Today is actually going to be a beautiful day. Um, it's going to be fantastic out. I think it's going to be pluses. Oh, really? yes. So the Gold Canar weather brought to you by Super 8 and Casey's. High of 1, low of minus 4 with some sunshine. We love sunshine. Tomorrow, High of minus four, low of minus six, with some partly cloudy skies. And Friday, going into the weekend, high of minus two, low of minus eight, with sunshine. I just got to say congratulations to uh, Kenora teams, high school teams. They kicked butt uh, mm -hmm. in the Norwasa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll cover that later, but yeah. Ooh. <laughs> congratulations to them. It's good. It's good stuff. So today is uh, to Wednesday. Wednesday we have a fantastic show and we have a fantastic guest. One of my personal favorites, Braden from the museum is gonna be here. Hi. He is here. <laughs> so not gonna be here. Yeah, he's, he's late. He's like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, any, any man that can pull off a bow tie can do whatever the heck he wants. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, Brandon's here. He's going to uh, talk about uh, all the things going on at the museum today. So it's going to be a fantastic show. I love yes. that guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday, is everything done for Tuesday night? What you? Last night? Yeah, it's, it was Tuesday. Yes. Uh, not the whole heck of a lot. <laughs> That's you got me again. That's okay. You know what? As, <laughs> as long as you didn't say Dancing with the Stars, no, you were sad. That's, no, that's not my show. It's, <laughs> it's uh, Sunday night's Breaking Amish and uh, Wednesday night Bingo on Shaw TV. Mm -hmm. Which is going to be good. Tonight, 7 o'clock, Wednesday uh, Bingo. Yeah, I'll be playing in the basement. Oh, nice. Yep. See, I still, you know what? I have to get a, uh, I have to get like a... What, is, what do they call that? A uh, substitute player. Somebody that actually plays for me, and then when I win, calls in for me, and then we just split the cash. So I can't play. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the fun? What do you mean, what's the fun? Mm, it's now, bingo. Bingo's now. fun. Bingo's huge. We like bingo. Oh, you like bingo. I do like bingo. I, I would like to play, but as an employee, oh. I, you know, I cannot. Play. Maybe, maybe there should be a list of what Chris actually does like. There's lots of things I like, Tracy. Oh. Tons of things I like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You just paint me with a really negative brush. <laughs> a big one. <laughs> uh, what's going on? So, oh. here we go. So, the bingo cards, oh, okay. <laughs> they are available in Kuwaitan at Big Wave Foods, B&B uh, &B General Store, Kuwaitan Place, in Kenora, Chicken Chef, Chipman Street, Husky, Luby's 24-Hour Store, Luby's 9th Street, Johnson's Pharmacy. Rabbit Lake Store, Red River Co-op, Skyline Store, Sunset Strip Husky, Swift Cash, Tilly's Pharmasave, Vets Confectionery, and yeah. Second Street Bakery. Absolutely. And also, if you are looking for other things to watch on the telly, because the season is, I mean, you know what, as everyone knows, the lockout still goes on, you can catch Sue Greyhound games on Shaw TV. Oh. And that is OHL, and that's fantastic hockey. Mm -hmm. I had the pleasure uh, about a year, two years ago, of going down to Edge Sault Ste. Marie and watching some of the games, and it is really, really good. Nice. Yeah, all those young guys, they're you know, great, great players, great up and coming. So you can check that out on Shaw TV. Also, you'll, if you're looking for something different, there are a whole bunch of shows that Shaw has launched, like Cooking with Fire, mm -hmm. uh, Make It Happen. Those shows uh, are on as well, and they are fantastic as well. So, proposal. And The Proposal. So, yeah, so... The Proposal. Mm -hmm. Is that like another Bachelorette type thing? Uh, no, it's uh, two days ago, and they, they just all explore all the things about uh, being married and leading up to the marriage. So they go through, and they oh. just talk about... Uh, they have one person who's getting married, and then they just kind of help them out and, uh, and explore. What is Do they this? actually get the proposal on there? <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Oh, Absolutely. okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Ding, ding, ding. That's why they call it the proposal. Sorry. I forgot, <laughs> the, forgot that important part. As soon as you hear marriage, I just get into cold sweat. I'm so. thinking about bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and gang <gangnam> style. <laughs> so, All righty. Fantastic. Um, let us, uh, let's go to a quick break. When we come back, let's bring Braden on. <laughs> Nora with 
I'd like to thank Wind and Water Interiors for being a proud supporter of local television programming. Wind and Water Interiors, 326 2nd Street South. Wetlands provide essential habitat for hundreds of species of wildlife, including fish. But these habitats are disappearing fast. Help us save Canada's wetlands today. Ducks Unlimited Canada, active by nature. One tree over its lifetime will remove about 40 tons of pollution from the atmosphere and replace it with pure air. Think what millions of trees will do. Help Tree Canada grow clean air. Trees do their part. Let's do ours. When you can't do it all, do what you can. Caring for others. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back, everyone. Back. Welcome, Braden. How are you? Good morning. I'm I gotta doing say, quite well. I love your style. Thank you. Thank you. Love it, love it. You know what? I was actually, I think the only other person that does a bow tie better than you has got to be James Bond. Uh, yeah, I think James Bond does it very well. He's been doing it for many, many years. So, uh, yeah, he does it very well. But, you know, I, I try to try to channel some James Bond, a little bit of Frank Sinatra. How long does and, it take uh, to do? It's actually, it's pretty quick. Um, a lot of people think it's kind of a complicated thing, but it's really kind of like a bow that you do when you're tying your shoes. Oh. Um, you just have to make sure that the, the wide parts are out. So. Very nice. Oh, yeah, very nice. And Frank Sinatra, so you definitely have taste. Hey, mm, what can I say? Indeed. Absolutely. What's going stuff. on at the uh, museum? <laughs> well, we're just wrapping up the arresting images, the mm -hmm. mugshot display. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been a lot of fun. Was we, it a good turnout? Or? It was a very good turnout. We had a lot of people come out. We had a lot of people um, who were a little bit nervous to see relatives there. Or <laughs> uh, We had one guy actually who came in to see himself, and we had to assure him, no, these are from over 100 years ago. So. Oh, I was going to um, ask him, was he like 90? Yeah, unless he's the Highlander. Um, he's not going <laughs> to kind of come up in the... <laughs> yeah, it was really great. A lot of people came in. Uh, from very young to the very old, and uh, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, anyone recognize anyone they knew? Or? Uh, unfortunately not. No. Unfortunately, that would have been pretty neat, I think. Or, <laughs> or, or going through and being like, hey, this guy looks very familiar. You know? <laughs> Uncle um, George! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we had, uh, we had uh, school classes come in, and they, they learned about photography and early mug shots, mm -hmm. and we had a very good presentation by Sergeant Carmen McCann, um, that was very well received. We got a lot of really great feedback from that, and he talked about kind of the uh, the real forensic stuff and kind of the real CSI stuff. He wouldn't like me saying CSI, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was really interesting, and it was something that um, we don't talk a lot about here. So it was cool to kind of get into that a little bit. It was really neat, especially yeah. with, you're right. We bring up the photography aspect of it. I mean, this day mm -hmm. and age, um, to have actually the, the cellulite and there, and cellulite, sorry, uh, on there is really rare because now it's all like phones and point and shoots, and I mean, all that's gone. It's yeah. gone from the world. So to see actually the, the, the way they, they did all the old style is very cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the classes that came in, they said they were very interested in kind of. Well, they were a grade eight class, so their curriculum was uh, early area Canada history, um, pioneer history, that sort of thing. So I went down and I pulled a lot of the, or the uh, cameras out of our collection. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the, the leather kind of accordion looking things yeah. and pulling it all out and everything. And, you know, the kids were amazed because they were pulling out their cell phones and they're <laughs> taking better photographs of their cell phones than with these cameras. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's really, it's incredible to, to think that just, um, you know, 100 years ago, it was so different. Mm. It absolutely is. Well, you know, in, in, I think they said in the last 100 years, there have been more technological advances in the mm. last 100 years than over a huge span of time, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. things have moved so fast. I mean, I take a look at my, my son, you know, he's on his iPod this morning, and it's like things like, the, you know, a camera and, yep. uh, and like a... I brought the, the word Discman the other day. <laughs> <laughs> People looked at me like, what are you talking about? It's like, you know, you don't remember you're trying, you're trying to walk with those things. They're huge. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, couldn't, you couldn't shake it because it would skip. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, leading technology. My other favorite was the, uh, the, the Sony. It was yellow. It was a Sony cassette. Yep, absolutely. Walkman. The Walkman. Yep. But you could, you could field punt that thing. Mm -hmm. And it would just skip down the road. you pick it up and go. So. Or you could listen to it with your friend. 
Yeah. So you're both sitting there. It was you know, good stuff. So yeah, so to, to have the, the grade eights go in and have a look at that stuff and, and, and kind of understand where everything's come from and how you know how it's progressed is it, that's really important. Yeah, it's it's really great to see to see it kind of click, to see mm -hmm. them come in and 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 to see them kind of processing it and and looking at. Um, the cameras from you know, the 1890s, and then the ones that look kind of a little more modern from the 20s, and then mm -hmm. all the way up, we pulled a, a Kodachrome camera from uh, the 1980s. Um, that was kind of similar to Polaroid, but they had some legal issues, so they had to pull that out. But luckily, we have one, so I was, <laughs> I was, showing, I was showing the kids that and kind of the whole uh, progression, and it's, it's really great. That would be Very cool to see, like a, like a gaming, you know, um, timeline. Mm -hmm. You know, the ColecoVisions, the Ataris, and... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Really? Um, yeah, sure. oh. yeah, not last summer, but the previous summer. It's a shame. I think you really would have enjoyed it. Oh. Arcade games and Atari all the way up to the uh, Xbox and Playstations and everything else. Well, and, and this brings up another reason why museums are so very important. Because a lot of the time, you know, you're right, people just forget. Like, I, I grew up with the NES, I mean, the Atari 2600 and all these cameras. And you grew up in this time, but my son, who's nine... He'll never know what a landline is. Like he's, it, we have one now, but he doesn't need one. Yep. And the, so when I talk about even video games, like he's playing Minecraft on his thing. But I mean, I talked to him what I used to do, and he just looks at me like, really? So <laughs> displays like you've done, all like the video game ones and this ones, the mug shots are very important just to give people an idea, like the younger generations, of how it all came. Yeah, and I think we take it for granted as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my my teenage brother has never lived in a house without internet, for example. Wow. You know, like I, I remember when the first time we got an internet connection and when ICQ was kind of the bee's yes. knees and, uh, you know, and, <laughs> you know, these, these different kinds of technological changes. Days. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even that old. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, so, so yeah, absolutely. And it's something that we take for granted and that you're right, a nine-year-old would have no idea like mm -hmm. that, uh, that, hey, once upon a time you couldn't play video games on your phone. And you, know. and you had to park your own car. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Try to explain to him what a TSR-80 is. <laughs> it just looks like so, so uh, speaking of all these things, like in the museum, what's coming up next for you guys? Like, what do you, this is going to wrap up. When does the next, do you just kind of go back to regular operation or what's the next big thing you're doing? The next big thing, it's, I guess it's a series of things. Obviously, Christmas is coming up. It's right, right. around the corner. Um, so on Thursday the 22nd, we're going to have the uh, downtown biz tree lighting reception. So if you're not familiar with that, they all gather around the huge Christmas tree they put up on the corner of Main and Second, um, something they've been doing since the 1930s. It's a really cool tradition. It's a huge, huge tree, and they do a ceremony, and Mayor Canfield throws a switch, and the tree lights up, mm -hmm. and everyone cheers, and it's very good. And since then, the 30s, I had no idea. Yeah, it's 1932 was, was born the first here, year they you did know, it. Like a, you know, crawl out from under the rock, Shire. <laughs> <laughs> Is it That's the 22nd, like, yep, November 22nd. Um, Do you know where they get the tree? I'm not sure, mm -hmm. actually. I, I understand Still it's actually. Mystery. I understand it's competitive. That there's people who say I would like to provide the tree, and oh. someone else says I would like to. I, that's so my they just pour the miracle grow on it. Like I guess so. Yeah. I yeah. guess so. Just uh, they use the same thing that Lance Armstrong was using, and just uh, <laughs> put, put it in a regular tree, and you know, just goes. <laughs> but they 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 light up the tree, and it's great, and everyone cheers, and they all come back to the museum, and there's hot cider, there's mm -hmm. there's uh, hot chocolate, there's cookies, there's gonna be music. Um, the vat of hot chocolate is so big they stir it with a canoe paddle. Nice. Um, oh, it's really, cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, originally, originally this reception was only, uh, you know, 50, 60, 70 people. But in the last couple of years, it's, it's really gone through the roof and it's become really a neat family time to come and see the decorations of the museum and, and to get together with the community. So how do you fit everybody in the in the museum? Like, do they do people just mill about, or is there like a reception hall down there? Or something? We have quite a bit of space. Just in the foyer, we can hit fit several hundred people. But I mean, throughout the entire museum, we can fit um, four or five hundred people fairly comfortably. So do you expect a good turnout this year? Or? I hope so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, a lot of it depends on the weather. Mm. Um, last year we had a, almost a perfect day for it. Mm. Just a little bit crisp, but. Uh, you know, a lot of families came down, a lot of young kids, and uh, they came down, they got their cookie, and they saw the band, and it was a lot of fun. Nice. Fantastic. And coming up uh, is the festival. Oh, yes, the, the Festival of Trees. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, looking forward to that, too. It's always a really great event. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not familiar with the Festival of Trees, uh, community groups throughout the community, uh, they get together and they 
put together a Christmas tree, and I think there's 25 of them this year. And so they fill up the museum with Christmas trees. So there's 25 festival trees. There's 17 museum trees. Um, so there's a lot of Christmas trees. <laughs> so it's like a Christmas explosion. <laughs> and, and you go through, and um, there's uh, the Seniors' Night, which is on Thursday, right. the Thursday before. Um, then there's the Gala, which is on the Friday. And then Family Day, which is on the Saturday. And that is... Um, the week after the tree lighting ceremony. So that's the, I think it's the 29th to the 30th, 29th to the 31st, I believe. And the, and the trees, as I understand, I mean, you just, user groups, I mean, this is, this is a pretty big line to get in to yeah, do a tree. And absolutely. once they've done the tree, then they auction them off, mm -hmm. which is actually very cool. I was, there, I was there a couple of times, and it's really neat to see all the different trees and, then, and find out exactly how, many, how much has been raised and people like, you find a tree you like. And you know, it's very, very cool. About and it's it. already decorated. It is, well, that's that's the big thing. A lot of stores and businesses buy them, so they can put them up and and uh, like you said, it's already decorated and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, there was one really great tree last year that someone created that um, they created these little characters that had tree houses all the way up through the tree, and it was uh -huh. it was sort of like um, the Robin Hood Prince of Thieves movie. Yeah. Remember yeah. that when they had the the, the tree house? It's, it's amazing. It's really. <laughs> really cool. Um, you, give us, you give an overall theme. What is the overall theme for this year? The overall theme is Christmas around the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Right on. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I, I, I'm kind of curious about how the, um, the exhibits come to the Lake of the Woods Museum. Who, mm -hmm. who chooses, you know, what you have in there, um, you know, to, to show? Yeah. Uh, we, we officially choose um, my coworker, Lynn Riddell. She is the temporary exhibits manager. So she's the one that kind of goes through them and flags the ones that are potentials and flags the ones that, oh, this looks interesting, this looks kind of neat. And then as a staff, we get together and we talk about them. And we say, oh, I think this would be really interesting, this would be a great draw, this would not be interesting, this wouldn't be a good draw. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, so there's a big catalog that uh, is basically published every year. And places like the Royal Ontario Museum and the Museum of Civilization and the really kind of big guys. Um, put out these traveling exhibits. We actually have a traveling, two traveling exhibits actually. Um, so we send ours out and we bring in others. And yeah, I mean, they're they're kind of built in a modular way that they can be transported easily and just set up. And neat. I didn't know Kenora had a had a traveling uh, exhibit. Yep. Oh, neat. Yep. So the the two that we have, we have our um, the residential school exhibit, which is the mm. um, Ontario Heritage Trust award winning exhibit. Um, that's been very popular throughout Ontario and also in Manitoba. And also there's the uh, Meacham Food Exhibit, which is First Nations food. Um, so it's uh, wild rice and, and uh, you know, fish and that sort of thing. Um, so that has a lot of kind of nutritional guide elements to it. So have they, have they made their round already uh, for the year or um, when do they start? Uh, the biggest time in moving uh, for those is the summertime. Okay. Um, so especially the residential school exhibit goes out a lot in the summertime. The, the food exhibit goes out quite a bit during the school year because schools like to bring it in as examples of, of ways to eat healthy. Mm. Um, so that, that travels around quite a bit. Uh, it's actually, I think it's on the way to Thunder Bay right now. Nice. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's, it's a neat way to, to use our assets to um, kind of spread out information for everyone. Absolutely. And, well, Please, go ahead. I was going to say, one of the misconceptions I think around town is people sit, and especially you know, small towns like Kenora, they're like, museum, it's Kenora. Mm -hmm. What do you have? Like, you, know, you put some, you know, you put a tree in there and you're done. But <laughs> Kenora has such a, a rich history, as you know. And, you, and all the times you've come on, I mean, and all the information you give, there's such a huge history in Kenora yeah. and all the different things you can do. So it is really, it, I, I find it really cool that we get to share mm -hmm. a piece of like Kenora's history with the rest of uh, Canada. It's Absolutely. really neat. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I think uh, my my personal opinion, and I I don't I don't do this for a living, but I think you should just set up some prohibition all the time because that's cool. Guns and booze and all this other stuff. You're done. Like you don't need to do anything else. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, duly noted. I mean, yeah, it's interesting. It's uh, the class that came in yesterday. The kids were really interested in the exhibit we had on the First World War, mm -hmm. for example. Um, that has uniforms and medals, and uh, it has a the, kind of a main feature is an MG08, uh, which is a German machine gun that was brought back from World War One. Well, 
and they were like, really excited by this and they were really interested and they were asking me questions and what about this and what about that and who's this guy and what's this picture of and it's something that it's a really great in yeah. um, it's something that if you can get them excited initially and you can you can kind of get them moving um, then it spreads out to many other things like for example they, they're not necessarily going to remember what they what they saw at the museum yesterday mm -hmm. but they are going to remember how they felt mm -hmm. they're going to remember being excited they're going to remember being happy to be there they're going to remember thinking it was really cool i think that's the key you know with um you know with kids is get them get them interested in different things and get them thinking get the ball rolling yep. there and you know so they're not you know video games and ataris and stuff well that's the thing. a lot we're talking about the world war stuff and i mean i mean a lot of kids um, really the only experience with it is video games like Call of Duty. Yep. Oh, yeah. And that's thing. So to hear that they go in and they actually see this stuff and they go, oh, this is real. And that's, yeah. You know, another amazing uh, purpose for having a museum to mm -hmm. make people know that this, it, it, it puts into real perspective that this actually happened. Yep. It mm -hmm. just, you know, you just weren't sitting behind a computer screen mm -hmm. looking at this thing. So that's mm -hmm. fantastic stuff. Absolutely. So to quick recap, so coming up is the tree lighting ceremony mm -hmm. at the museum and then the week after that the festival of trees absolutely and then uh quickly in the future we what? have mm -hmm. a couple two in particular big projects that we're working on mm. um that i can't say right now oh, uh, unfortunately on. i'm gonna have to come on and, and talk about them when when everything's finalized but i think uh one in particular i think people are going to be very very excited about so cool. um, I'm quite excited about it. I would love to talk about it right now, um, but I really can't. It's like watching really Steve can't. Wilkos, and the, the lie detector test comes in, and you, and then commercial break. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Brady, thanks very much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Always informed me. You're a great, fantastic guest, and you're welcome back anytime, sir. Thank you. So Keep gonna, rocking the tie. Yeah. Right. We're going to uh, go to a quick break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk a little bit about local news. Go Kenora would like to thank Swift Cash for being a proud supporter of local television programming. Swift Cash, 531 Park Street. Good one. Welcome back, Hi. everyone, <laughs> and thanks very much to Braden Murray for coming on. He's so fantastic. Indeed. I like that guy. Yeah. So, good stuff. What's shaking in Kenora? I don't know. Oh, All right. Wait. Well, tonight, um, <laughs> other than Lots. TV bingo, we have um, at the rec center uh, from 7 to 9 is uh, the free event. It's called Protect Our Future, mm -hmm. the Kenora's uh, World Diabetes Health Fair. Go check it out. Mm -hmm. Also, um, coming up uh, next month, maybe it's still coming, it's Gingerbread, <laughs> La Gingerbread Lane, which is kind of cool. Saturday, uh, December 8th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, at the Jubilee Church of God Hall. God Hall. Uh, it's coming up. Sorry, <laughs> mix me up there. So there's gonna be some entertainment. There's gonna be musicians, work projects, gingerbread um, lane. Uh, it's gonna be kind of cool, and we'll talk about more of this, this coming in. And uh, it's all Nan Norman is organizing it. So, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a little ways away. We'll talk about it again. Okie dokie, Smoky. Um, yeah, congratulations again to um, our high school teams. They uh, kicked butt in Norwasa. Mm -hmm. um, T A swept uh, Sioux Lookout. 
totally. The boys uh, won uh, over the Warriors 8-2 to two at the rec center last night. Uh, Tanner Capera and Rory Keith. Um, they each had a pair of goals in the victory. Mm -hmm. Also um, in Sioux Lookout, the Saints girls cruised uh, to an 11-0 win. Mm. Hockey. hockey. Yeah, there you go. Fantastic. <laughs> in so there hockey. Is, there is hockey going on. Did, oh, okay. What did I say? No, no. Oh. The, yeah, the lesser, the lesser unknown sports called hockey. Oh, okay. Or as I like to call it, dump and chase. So. All right. <laughs> yeah. And also the Beaver Bray uh, boys um, hockey team uh, was in Red Lake, and uh, they won 8-1. Nice. Um, in a little bit of uh, national news, and I know for sports fans, apparently, from what I understand, the Toronto Blue Jays have made a series of massive, massive trades. And uh, the, look, the buzz is, uh, for the people that I know, uh, that next year they are looking like a World Series uh, competitive team. Huh. So they've done a whole bunch of things. I'm, there's a whole bunch of players involved, which I... like I, the who? Lots of pitchers, and wow. they've changed it. So it's, it is a really big deal because, I mean, the last time the Jays uh, won anything was 92. In 93, they've been back-to-back -back World Series. And I remember that very vividly because at the same time that that was going on, they're having the first uh, referendum uh, for Quebec separating everything, mm. and the Blue Jays were in the news more than this other issue. So <laughs> it was, it was kind of neat, but it, it, it's neat again. You know, look, uh, you know, anytime a Canadian team gets anywhere, it's like it, the Stanley Cup. You know, it's, uh, it'd be nice to see a Canadian team win it. But what are you going to do? Indeed. Yeah, so uh, other news, uh, Kenora Substance Abuse uh, Mental Health Task Force. Uh, they like to invite uh, local service providers to a presentation on managed alcohol programs. So that's going on uh, November 22nd, one to four at the Minnis Hall, the Super 8. Great. Also, uh, Randy Nickel and uh, the BLT, the brand leadership team, invites um, everyone to the uh, Lake of the Woods Discovery Center on uh, Friday, this coming Friday, mm -hmm. the 16th at 10 a.m. They're going to uh, in unveil Kenora as um, North America's premier boating destination. Mm -hmm. I already knew that, though. That is like old news. <laughs> yeah. And also there's um, the ELA is back in the news a little bit again. Mm. So now there is a, uh, the coalition director, uh, Diane Orley. Uh, I think it's how you pronounce her name. Uh, it says negotiations are underway to sell the ELA. Yeah. Experimental Lakes. So. Yeah. But the buyer does not want to be named. So I wouldn't either. <laughs> it, you know what? It's... I'm surprised because the ELA is one of the issues that just keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, I mean, I guess, which is good and bad, but it, it is really interesting to see that people actually, they do care and it's, it's one of those things that keeps resurfacing them. Mm -hmm. So very, well, it's important very, stuff. Absolutely. Also, um, we've got the blood donor clinic on Monday and Tuesday happening at TA. Uh, Call one triple eight two donate or uh, www.blood.ca. And if you're going out to do any of these events, it is going to be a very nice uh, few days leading into the weekend. So the Go Canor weather is brought to you by Super 8 and Casey's. A high of one today, low of minus four with a lot of sunshine. So great day out. Tomorrow, high of minus four, low of minus six with uh, cloudy skies. And then on Friday, hitting the weekend, a high of minus two, a low of minus eight with more sunshine. And those days are always deceiving. You know, you, you get up in the morning, you look out, the sun's shining, you're like this is beautiful. You step outside and uh, it's cool. <laughs> so we're, we're starting to creep into those, those colder weathers. Can I just mention uh, one last thing? Sure. Um, Sally Hunt is uh, putting on the ELF project again for 2012. Um, she needs um, uh, everything. Uh, hold on a sec, sorry, I had this out. Um, gift certificates, especially from uh, local restaurants, um, specialty food, chocolates, nuts, dried fruit, uh, small gifts, children's gifts, um, and food. Um, and she uh, takes this stuff and uh, she distributes it to uh, folks folks in need of it. So Absolutely. And it's, a, it's, it's anonymous and they yes. just, they're doing it with the elf part? And she's also willing to do uh, pickups. Um, so please call her at 468-8888. Absolutely yes. fantastic. So, and then uh, next couple of days, we have good shows. Tomorrow, Dave Kane. Friday, Christine Madsen. Go out, enjoy the plus one day, and we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.